Hi darlings, welcome to a brand new fashion video here on my channel. Today for Sunday's fashion video, I'm not gonna lie, I was scratching my head a little bit thinking what can I share with you today? And I don't want my Sunday fashion videos to always be new, 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 here's what's new in my wardrobe, here's what I've been buying lately. Sometimes, well always, I want them to be educational so that you can take something away from the videos, give you some inspiration and just get you excited to wear the things that are already in your wardrobe. Now typically, this time of year in particular, I struggle, I know that a lot of my friends struggle because it's that strange transition time. It's still fairly warm outside and yet things around us are starting to feel a bit more uncomfortable. The day that I'm filming this video is the day the Starbucks have just relaunched their pumpkin spice lattes and that means that autumn is very much on its way. So I call this time this transitional period. So I call this the transitional period and it is notoriously hard to dress for. Add to that the fact that we've not really got dressed in the same way as we would in previous years for, yeah, like 18 or 19 months. So I don't know about you, but I feel a little bit out of sync and in need of a little bit of inspo and a little bit of help and advice for making the most out of my wardrobe at this time of year. So instead of just spieling off <laughs> loads of tips, I thought I would actually go to my Instagram Josie LDN. I do ask quite a few questions uh, with regards to videos over on my Instagram, so if you're not following me on there, then I would highly recommend it, as well as lots of Cotswoldy fashion inspo. I asked over there just this morning for your fashion dilemmas, and I'm basically going to go through those in today's video and hope to help you with any of those little sticking points, things that you might find a little bit more challenging at this time of year when it comes to putting outfits together. Now, of course, I'm absolutely not an expert, so we'll be playing around with some outfit ideas and hopefully I'll learn something in today's video as well. A couple of things before we get started. Dexter and Dickens, my sausage dogs, are on a mad one this morning. Dickie actually drank a bit of my coffee this morning, <laughs> so I think he's a little bit jittery. I, I can't control that boy, he's totally crazy. Um, and Dexter is anxious because uh, we've got the painter here and there's someone in his house. <laughs> so I'm sorry if you can hear them barking. But darlings, if you're new, then I would love it if you hit the subscribe button down below um, and turn on that notification bell if you do not want to miss any upcoming videos from me. Okay, so I only popped this question box up on my Instagram um, about an hour ago, but we have got some really great questions. So in no particular order, let's get started. Okay, the first one is from Meg and she has asked, when is it acceptable to wear autumnal colors? Well, as you might be able to guess from my brown dress, I would say now, as soon as you start seeing, okay, I've said this before in vlogs, but I live in the countryside and I feel like we're very affected by the seasons here because Unlike in the city where you don't get to see that much nature, we're obviously surrounded by it here. So I see the fields changing, I see the colors of nature all around me changing. And that is really what inspires my wardrobe to change because seeing the fields turn from green to golden and now being full of hay bales, pumpkin patches are starting to flourish. That makes me feel autumnal. And I feel like, especially here in the UK, I think obviously it depends on the weather. If you live in California and you're still experiencing blue skies and 30 to 40 degrees Celsius every day, then maybe August is too early. But here in the UK, we've had gray sky. <laughs> we've had gray skies and mild temperatures for a little while now. So I would say, don't be afraid to get your autumn color palette out right now. And also take a look at what the shops are selling at the moment. Even if you have no intention to buy, just have a little browse. You'll notice that Netta Porter, River Island, H&M, they're all bringing out these autumnal tones. Now, if you're like me, really excited to wear autumnal colors, but perhaps, yes, the temperatures are still mild, or maybe we are still due a little bit of a heat wave, then perhaps stick to more summery silhouettes and styles. This dress I'm wearing right now, I would say it's very trans seasonal. It's actually quite short, um, so perfect for those Indian summers, end of summer kind of days, but the color is very much autumnal. So if your silhouette is summery, but the color is autumnal, then it is perfect for wearing right now. I would say shades like browns, um, sage green, rusty colors are all absolutely perfect for wearing at this time of year. And yes, at the moment, maybe 
bring it back a little bit by accessorizing with your favorite favorite summer accessories whether that is your favorite pair of sandals but if you're looking at buying something new remember that this trans what did i call it transitional period it's actually quite short and it won't be long until you're going to be wanting to wear full autumn wear so maybe have it in the back of your mind can i style this in an autumnal way as well and i'm pretty sure having flicked over some of the questions in the q a box there's gonna be some questions on that styling so um yeah keep watching to see how you style summery silhouette pieces in autumnal tones to make them more appropriate when the temperatures start to drop katie ann has asked what to wear on hot but rainy days. Now I'm not sure about hot because here in the UK we don't get majorly hot um, but actually I was watching my friend Susie's vlog when she went to Wilderness Festival and she made an excellent point. If it's warm and wet or any time that it's wet do you really want to be wearing trousers? My, automa my automatic first thought would be um, yeah wear like lightweight trousers and wellies maybe but no because if it's raining and it's splattering up on you your trousers are going to get wet which is not ideal because then it's going to take ages to dry out but if you wear if it's hot and rainy and you wear a lightweight dress and your legs are bare it doesn't really matter if your legs get wet because let's face it they will dry a lot quicker than fabric so actually obviously it depends on where you're going i would say that not wearing too much material obviously if it's hot you're not going to want to anyway um but not wearing too much fabric is probably going to be your best option and of course there are some really lovely lightweight raincoats that you can get in fact let me show you my favorite so it doesn't look anything exciting when it's on the hanger, so I will pop a try-on clip on the screen here. But this is my favourite summer raincoat, perfect for those warm but rainy days. This is from Reese last year, so I will try my best to find something similar. Reese is one of those brands that does tend to bring things back year after year, so hopefully it'll come back. It is very, very lightweight. It's not. It has got a lining which just makes it more comfortable. This you can just shove in the washing machine, so it's really nice and easy to care for. But what I particularly love about it is that it does actually have a cinched in waist. So with this little drawstring detail, you can really cinch it in and accentuate your silhouette. So it's also really, really flattering. Natasha Louise has asked how to still wear summer dresses, but with boots and jumpers. Well, darling, I think you've answered your own question. Obviously, there are some summer dresses that won't work in autumn, unfortunately, at this time of year, and there are so many that will. I think it is mostly down to the colour. Are there any autumnal tones running through? If it's mostly spring pastel colours, then perhaps it's not quite the right one. Um, and I do tend to find strappy dresses don't style quite as nicely for autumn. But if you have got a little bit more fabric in the upper section, over the chest, over the bodice, then they can style absolutely beautifully if you know how to layer them. So something that I reach for time and time again in autumn is a long line cardigan. I'll link a few of my favourites down below and I'm really looking forward to seeing what the high street brings out again this year. I have a feeling River Island have already bought one out. My absolute favourite, it is an investment piece, it's potentially one to add to the Christmas wish list, is a gorgeous cashmere one from a brand called Senrev. And if you want to make your summery dresses in the right colour tones, feel a little bit more autumnal, add your long line cardigan and you know what I'm going to say, cinch it in around the waist with a skinny little waist belt. My favourite of course is the Loewe. I currently own it in the brown but I'm thinking of investing in this uh, kind of pinky beige shade, I'll pop a picture on the screen here as well for this autumn winter but yeah having a long line cardigan instantly makes your summer dresses look a little bit more appropriate for autumn and therefore works really nicely with boots. I would say dresses like this if the silhouette is quite voluminous, that has a lot of frills, has puff sleeve, beautiful but not going to work if you have got a jumper on over the top um, so I would say stick to more simple silhouettes if they go a little bit more voluminous on the skirt then that's absolutely fine but this is where those building blocks in your wardrobe really come in handy so look for cardigans and look for accessories that are neutral in color because that gives you so much more flexibility with your dresses the things that you want to accessorize for example aside from one or two literally all of the cardigans and accessories in my collection are either cream white or brown because then it means that as accessories they literally work with everything in my wardrobe and that was that is a tip that i would highly recommend um, that you follow as well when it comes to investing in your layering pieces 
quite a lot of queries about temperature at this time of year not knowing if i'll be too cold or too warm in an outfit or being cold in the morning and then feeling like i'm boiling in the afternoon i can absolutely relate i've had this problem quite a lot lately and the answer is one word but one word that actually is very hard to master and it is of course layering now i find that actually the tip that i gave in the last question about a long line cardigan is really great for this because you feel super duper snuggly in the mornings when you're leaving your house commuting you feel snuggly you actually feel like you're leaving your house in the dressing in your dressing gown but then you can just whip it off and have a lovely dress on underneath i would say it's usually the upper half of the body that i'm a little bit more conscious of i don't ever really feel cold in my legs so i probably wouldn't put on a really thick jumper with nothing underneath if I had even the slightest inclination that it might get sunny or warm in the afternoon make sure you have something on your upper half that you can take off whether it's a lovely cardigan that you can pop over your pop over your arm later in the day um, or a lightweight coat that's just going to take the chill off if you're walking to work for example um, but it's not so bulky that it's going to make you hot and sweaty later on this is another kind of outfit that works really well on those days where it's maybe a little bit chillier in the morning and then it warms up throughout the day because it is cozy in its nature it is a high neck knitted oh i didn't even sort the collar out properly knitted vest top but then because your arms are free it just stops you from overheating i don't usually wear jeans either but i'm really loving how this top styles with jeans and with slightly more autumnal toned accessories like the bag and you may not have seen the shoes very closely in the um, cutaways but these are last year's and other stories i just love these padded brown shoes this is a really nice transitional footwear i'm not quite ready for closed toes but i do want things which look a little bit more autumnal and the color the style of these I feel is perfect for trans seasonal dressing. Erin has said her dilemma is that I'm not ready to stop wearing short skirts and dresses. Erin, why would you? Don't stop wearing your short skirts and dresses. Yeah, I genuinely think it's the upper half of the body that feels the cold more so. And of course, this is the time of year to start bringing out your over the knee boots. Oh my goodness. Well, I say that, but actually it was my knee-high boots last year. These were probably my favorites because I do love a little heel. These are my Chloe boots. Can you remember? I actually nearly sent these back and then I ended up wearing them all throughout the transitional period, autumn, winter, and quite a lot of spring as well. <laughs> but if you do want to continue with a shorter hemline, then boots are your best friend of course your dress needs to have a little bit of an autumnal tone to it so that it doesn't look crazy if your dress is midi length and it really does get chilly then you can start wearing tights as well or even thermal leggings because no one's going to see if the dress ends here or even here then you're only going to get a tiny little glimpse of it and you're gonna stay nice and warm, but you can still wear your favorite short dresses. It's actually not something that I usually do, but also I think it looks really cute if you have got a favorite skirt to just bundle some knitwear over on your top half. If you've got a favorite summer outfit, and even if it is in a slightly lighter shade, just invest in a really cozy cardigan that you can still wear your favorite outfits, have your legs out, wear your favorite skirt, but just pop on a cardigan and instantly it makes it more seasonally appropriate and temperature appropriate. <laughs> Of course, if skirts are very much part of your style, then why not look at some skirts in a slightly more autumnal color shade like this one here I have been loving wearing lately. This one is from Joseph via Netta Porter. So yeah, a little bit more premium, but I will try and find some more affordable alternatives and leave them linked down below. Um, you can, if the temperatures are still warm, of course, you can pair with something short sleeve. I love this square neckline tank top. Um, but then of course, if it gets chilly, then add on a cozy knit or even a long sleeve polo neck works really nicely with skirts and then to accessorize I have worn this skirt with my little Valentino boots but yeah if it's a little bit warmer you can wear this with some strappy sandals so switching out some of your wardrobe favorites for the same silhouette but in a more autumnal colors often makes them a lot more appropriate for this time of year but also if you've got the right kinds of things in your wardrobe you can get a little bit experimental something that I wore pretty much this time last year that I actually really really liked was one of my Tory Burch dresses, yes, it wasn't that short, but then I paired a sleeveless knit over the top. Now that was quite a bold look for me. If I can find a picture, I'll pop it on the screen here. Um, in fact, it was this knit here from Karen Millen. It is a high kind of cowl neck, a little bit of a fair isle detail. So quite a classic sleeveless knit. And then again, I did cinch it in with a waist belt 
And I really, really liked that outfit. Again, I accessorized it with some autumnal colors, handbags, etc. So if you have got a favorite summer dress, which is a little bit shorter, try something like this, a sleeveless knit. It might surprise you on what a fantastic autumn outfit that could be. I've noticed this next question quite a lot. Um, wearing long dresses under coats, what coats to wear with midi skirts, that kind of thing. And I'm not gonna lie, I've just never really thought about it. I, I think someone at some moment in time said that it was a fashion faux pas to have your coat ending here, but your skirt ending here. It really doesn't bother me and it shouldn't bother you either. I most definitely would not go out and buy a coat that was just the perfect length for each and every one of my skirts and dresses. Don't worry about it. There are some fashion rules out there or like a magazine might be like, oh my God, fashion faux pas. It's not. If you like your outfit, don't worry <laughs> about these fashion rules. Honestly, I have never, ever, ever cared that you can see a strip of my midi skirt because my coat ends five inches high. It just doesn't bother me. What I would say is that I find it looks better if the coat is of a midi length as well. I wouldn't wear um, a cropped jacket. Do many people even wear cropped jackets anymore? I would say that the thing that matters is more the tone of smartness of your coat and your midi skirt. So I wouldn't wear, for example, Midi skirts in general, I think are quite elegant. I think they are quite a smart piece. So I wouldn't go wearing like my dog walking puffer jacket, <laughs> for example. I would wear a more elevated woolen coat in a midi length. So as long as the smartness of your coat and your skirt slash dress match, don't worry about anything else. Don't worry about being able to see the skirt or dress underneath. It really doesn't matter. No one is going to look at you and be like, oh my god, I can see her skirt. In fact, if anything, it's lovely because you're not hiding your entire outfit underneath. So um, I hope that's what you mean by that question. And yeah, I would say look at more midi length coats because they're a lot more versatile. And I think they look better silhouette wise as long as as opposed to ones which end kind of high thigh. I would look for coats that end below the knee if you do want to wear a lot of dresses and midi skirts. But yeah, don't worry about a couple of inches showing because I actually think it looks really, really nice. The next question is about layering. Nailing the layering, nailing the layering, for freezing mornings and sweltering afternoons. Okay, well, if your mornings are actually freezing, then girl, you need to get yourself some thermals. I am a number one thermal queen. I love them. As soon as September arrives, I will literally have a thermal underneath every single outfit. And you may think thermals are just for ultra cold days, they are, um, but they are actually very temperature regulating. So a good thermal, and I will leave my favorites link down below, will temperature regulate you. So it'll stop you getting too cold and it'll stop you from getting too hot. If you've ever worn sweaty betty workout wear, you'll know that it has the sweat wicking technology and like thermal technology as well, which regulates the temperature. So that's amazing. Um, but also I would say avoid polyester at all costs. Look at natural materials. Wool and cashmere are your best friends because they are also temperature regulating. So sometimes we'll be out on a dog walk and I'm just wearing a thin cashmere jumper. I'm not hot at the end of the walk because it's quite thin, but at the beginning of the walk, Charlie or whoever I'm with might be like, oh my god, it's so cold. And never underestimate the power of cashmere. It keeps you so, so warm. Silk is similar actually. It has very similar benefits. If you want to temperature regulate, Good quality natural materials like wool and cashmere and thermals are gonna be your saviors. A dilemma from Julie is autumn starts when I hadn't had the chance to wear all my new summer clothes. Julie, I feel your pain. Have we even had a summer this year? We've had such a short burst of it. Looking back, over summer. This is why I'm always overdressed because I just don't like, I don't like things sitting in my wardrobe and saving them for best. I like to wear my really nice things around the house. Even if I'm going on quite a casual lunch meeting with friends or something, I'll always get dressed up because life's too short firstly and I just don't see the point in buying nice things and leaving them in my wardrobe. Now I know that we've not had many, well there's been a few more events this summer but my number one tip here is just get wear, get used, get wear out of the things in your wardrobe. Don't save things for best, that's tip number one. But also, take good care of these things and as long as you have been clever, and this is why I always say quality over quantity, don't invest too much in trends, invest in classic pieces. Don't worry, darling, you can still wear these things next summer. Just switch up the accessories if you want them to feel new again. And also, summer is not over. Hopefully we're still gonna get a few more heat waves. 
well, sunny days <laughs> at least, and then just add in a few more autumnal accessories and you can definitely style those pieces for the autumn season. Next question is from Shannon the Blonde, um, or Dilemma rather, and she has said, not a summer to autumn problem, but I'm struggling to find the Prada slash Hermes boot dupes, in brackets, affordable. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, I'm afraid I can't help you with Hermes because I don't actually own anything from Hermes um, and I don't know anything about buying Hermes pieces. But these, I believe, are the Prada boots that you're referring to. And honestly, I could not speak more highly of these boots. They were probably one of my most worn things um, last autumn winter. And it was great having these and the Chloe boots because I wore them for totally different things. Like these actually became um, like dashing out the house, heading to an event where I'm gonna be walking a lot, or you know, I don't think you need to justify between having a heeled pair of boots and a flat pair of boots, but because of where we now live and the kind of outfits that I frequently wear, I knew that these are gonna be an exceptional investment and look at them, they are so classic and timeless that I'm gonna have these in my wardrobe for at least 10 years until they fall apart. They're very, very well made, very comfortable and yet yeah, literally go with everything. So the reason I say all of that is that I really believe that they are an incredible investment. Even if it is a huge splurge, I mean, yeah, for me as well, it was a huge splurge. I really, really think that they are worth it. And instead of buying three pairs of like high street shoes this autumn winter, I would cut back on a few high street pieces in order to get those because I really feel that they elevate an outfit um, and I think that they are worth the investment. Having said that, of course, that is just not possible for everyone. Prada probably will put the price of these boots up again this year as well. So it's just not, a possibility for everybody. What I would say is that um, Black Friday often has some amazing discounts. I will be covering Black Friday again, of course, this year, and if and when I see these at a reduced price or any of the items which I consider classics and great investments in my wardrobe, I will share that on my Instagram stories. I'll probably be doing newsletter roundups again um, and fashion and videos like I did last year. So keep an eye on the Black Friday content because I hope that something like that will become available in the sales and I would always recommend investing in timeless things like that when they do go down because it's, it's rare but you can get yourself some real gems. My second tip would be to check on the Outnet. I've been buying a lot from there recently because they've got, I used to feel that they had only um, like quite trend led bits which were not in fashion anymore like the bits that didn't sell from Netta Porter, it's essentially Netta Porter's outlet but they've got some really classic bits in at the moment. So if I see them on the outlet as well, I will share on my stories and I'll try to mention it in a, in a vlog or something. But yeah, keep an eye on the outnets. Um, but then again, if that is a little bit above your price or you just want a pair now, then I would look to those premium retailers like Reese. I always find do amazing boots. I have a few pairs of boots, um, boots from Reese, which I've had for many years and I think their quality is amazing. Price point below that, Dune, Dune do amazing boots. I've actually not seen any dupes for these, um, but again, I'll keep a look out. But then also have a look at the less obvious, but kind of countryside brands like Le Chameau, Fairfax and Favour. Um, they do the most beautiful, very, very high quality footwear. These are a pair of boots that I have from Fairfax and Favour. You can get them without the heel as well. In fact, if I get another pair this year, I might get them without the heel, but beautiful quality. Look how gorgeous that leather is. I would say the leather quality is pretty much as good as the Prada. You just don't get that like bougie factor. And a lot of these brands as well, you can actually measure because I, I noticed another question was about sizing for boots. A lot of these brands enable you to measure the widest part of your calf um, and send that to them and then they will adjust the size here so it fits you absolutely perfectly. The Face Clinic has asked, mentioned coats as her dilemma. I've got two dogs so walk a lot and the right coat is a stressful situation. Barber, <laughs> have you got a barber coat? They are the best, really deep pockets for um, 
poo bags, sorry, but practical, your phone, whatever else you need to take with you. They're a wax jacket, so if it rains, no stress. If your dog jumps up at you and they've got muddy little port boards, that's absolutely fine. You can just rinse it off, you can re-wax them, and the more you wear them, the better they get. Netta Porter and I think Farfetch now also stock barber jackets. So they're easier than ever to get your hands on. Um, I would recommend either in like an olive green or the brown shade that they have. Yeah, barber jackets are absolutely my go-to for dog walking. And I would recommend getting at least one size up, because then if it gets freezing, you can wear one of those little puffer, like Uniqlo um, down jackets underneath and your cozy knits and things like that. And I'm gonna end on this one because I've been filming for half an hour and I don't like my Sunday videos to be too long because y'all got places to be and things to do. So the last one from Jessica is what to wear to a September wedding and that's such a lovely question. I've got two weddings coming up this September which I am very much looking forward to. I would say, gosh, a September wedding could either be really cold or it could be really hot, so very much a case of um, probably having to decide on the morning based on what the weather's going to be. But I personally think that midi dresses with three quarter sleeves are so elegant for a September wedding. Uh, you can go with a summery pattern, but you're still gonna be quite covered up. I'll pop a few favorites. I've taken some pictures and some favorites um, on the screen here, but I have noticed some really gorgeous dresses on Karen Millen lately. Again, I'll pop a, pic a few pictures up on the screen here. The sleeve length makes them a little bit more appropriate for like the end of summer, but other than that, the silhouette is still really summery and perfect for weddings. You could, if you're going in your own car, obviously pop a cardigan in the car. If the wedding is a little bit smarter or at a more grand location, then I think that needle and thread dresses. I've just seen their autumn winter collection. In fact, I've actually ordered this dress for an upcoming wedding and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. The amount of material there is gonna keep you quite warm if it is a slightly chillier day, but equally it's lovely quality material. So hopefully it's gonna be breathable if it is super warm and toasty. Um, so they're my go-to brands. But yeah, in general, I would say that midi skirt I wouldn't really go much shorter than midi anyway at a wedding. Weddings are not the time to dress sexy, so too much leg at a wedding, personally, is, for me, is not what I would go for. So midi length, and if it is gonna be slightly cooler in the day, then a midi length sleeve. Do you know what, um, what are they called, like jacket dresses? Like Kay Middleton wears them a lot. I think they are so elegant. If you are my age or above, <laughs> I think that they are just, you look sensational if you wear a coat dress, is that what they're called? I've worn one from Ted Baker to Royal Ascot before and it would have been the perfect wedding outfit. Of course, Ted Baker, they have fantastic wedding dress options too. So yes, a few of my favorites that I have popped on the screen will all be linked in the description box down below. Now darlings, I'm gonna wrap it up here. Thank you so much for watching. If I didn't get to your dilemma, maybe I'll do another one of these videos. You can leave any fashion dilemmas in the question box down below. I think I'm doing quite a bit of driving on Sunday. Charlie will be because I'm getting a new car, yay! So I'll be in the passenger seat, so I'll be able to reply to lots of your comments, especially the first hour after a video goes live is when I'm very chatty with you guys in the comments. So any other fashion dilemmas, I will try to get back to you. So darlings, wishing you a wonderful weekend, a wonderful bank holiday weekend if you're here in the UK, and I will see you on Tuesday for a brand new vlog. Thank you for watching, bye!